Virgin Voyages is a very different cruise line. They've designed these amazing new ships to break all of the rules. There's a ton of hype and opinions out there, and I'm here to set the record straight. So stay tuned and learn all about what you can expect on Virgin Voyages, today on Seymour Seas. Virgin Voyages is a relatively new player in the cruise industry. They wanted to be a disruptive market entry, and they've absolutely accomplished that and then some. After a rough start due to the pandemic shutdown, they are well on their way with winning several awards and creating a very loyal new following. Hi everyone and welcome. If you are new here, I am Doug and this is Seymour Seas, your cruise tips and planning channel where I hope to help you and your family pick, plan, and enjoy your next cruise vacation. If you find the video helpful in any way, as always, please do give it that thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if you have not done so already. 97% of you are not subscribed, so please consider Consider it. It is absolutely free to you and it really does help my channel grow. Thanks so much and let's get started. Virgin is a very different cruise line and that is by design. For one, they are one of the very few cruise lines that are adults only. That's right, you must be at least 18 years or older to actually sail on Virgin Voyages. They have several shorter itineraries out of the U.S., as well as a few longer ones in the Caribbean, and they also have longer 7 to 14 day cruises in the Med and in Europe. They have three ships in service, plus one on the way. The Scarlet Lady was launched in 2021 after a brief delay due to the pandemic shutdown, and its home port is out of Miami. The Valiant Lady was launched in 2022, and its registered home port is Barcelona. Now, the Resilient Lady was released in 2023, and its home port is listed as Athens, Greece. Now, the Brilliant Lady is expected sometime in late 2024, or possibly even 2025, and is expected to home port in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Another difference for Virgin Voyages is that it is a mostly all-inclusive cruise line where they don't charge extra for specialty dining, Wi-Fi, or gratuities. All of that is included in your base fare. Other purposeful design differences that Virgin offers is one, all essential drinks are included with Virgin. This includes all soda, so a soda package is not required, all water, bottled water, coffee, teas and iced tea, similar to other cruise lines. But another difference is that they do not currently have a full drink package. What you do is you basically pre-purchase your bar tab and this is onboard credit to pay for all of your alcoholic drinks. As you pre-purchase this, you, you can do it in increments of 100, 200, or 300. And normally there is some sort of a promotion from Virgin that they either match that or they provide you with some uh, onboard bar tab as well. Your basic Wi-Fi is also included. You can upgrade this to a premium Wi-Fi. And if you have a VIP package, you're going to be able to get that premium Wi-Fi included at no charge. Gratuities are built into the base fare. They also do not have a current loyalty program. Now they do have a couple of tiers, whether you have sailed with Virgin or you have not, but they did offer in 2023 a loyalty tier match program, if you were in the upper levels of other cruise lines, they would match your status and give you similar perks on Virgin. Once their loyalty program is up and running, I'm sure that they'll bring some sort of this type of matching program back. Dining on Virgin Voyages is also very different. All the food is included with the exception of just one or two upcharge opportunities, but there is no main dining room. You actually have six different specialty restaurants where reservations are required and you can eat at these at least one time during a short cruise or for longer cruise, five nights and more. You can eat at these two times each 
during your voyage. Now, once on board, you are able to make additional reservations, but pre-booking reservations can be made 45 days prior to the cruise. This is only representative of about 30% of the availability. So the pre-cruise reservations do fill up very, very quickly. So I recommend either staying up late the 45 days before or getting up very, very early that day and getting on your app to make your dining reservations. Once on board, a lot more reservations will open up and walk-ins are absolutely allowed once on board. And it's been my experience and those of many others that you will have absolutely no problem getting a table at your dining time once on board. There is also not a buffet on Virgin Voyages. What you have in place is a food court called the galley. And this is an area with several different venues where you sit down, a server comes over and takes your order and brings all of the different items from all of the different venues to you at your table. Now, there are many prepackaged uh, grab and go items available. So you do not have to always sit down and wait for your service. This is controversial and it takes a little bit getting used to, but there is no buffet on board. Those six main dining locations, the specialty restaurants, are all exceptional and you would actually be paying extra for this quality on most other cruise lines. They consist of The Wake, which is, I believe, on deck five aft, and it is the steakhouse on board. It is exceptional. They have great steaks, and they are also known for their great brunch, which they serve every day. Just a note here, there are no limitations for the brunch reservations pre-cruise on the app. Razzle Dazzle is a vegan forward uh, venue that is also known for its breakfast, and you can make reservations uh, unlimited amount pre-cruise on the app. The Test Kitchen is a fixed menu. It's kind of a laboratory-like, very inventive venue, very large, and it normally has two set menus per cruise. Pink Agave is a Mexican influence venue, and they have a wonderful ribeye steak covered with a sauce and cheese. There's also lots of tequila drinks available at Pink Agave. Gumbe is a Korean barbecue on board where you will be seated at a large table with new friends and a group of people that you may not know. This is a very talented meat masters show, and it's always a fun environment. Extra Virgin is the Italian restaurant on board where they are known for their fresh pastas, steaks, and a variety of different seafood offerings. Don't worry, there's still more complimentary food venues around the ship where you can get a snack during the day, the evening, and even late night. There is an ice cream stand called Lick Me Till. So just use your imagination there. It's a standalone ice cream counter, and that's all included in your fare. In the social club, which is the gaming area, there is an old-fashioned soda fountain where you can get popcorn, chicken wings, hot dogs of many different varieties, as well as desserts. The dock is more aft of the social club, and it features a lot of live music, as well as Mediterranean tapas and fantastic flame-grilled skewers. The pizza place on board does not have slices of pizza available under a lamp. It actually has full pies made to order. They do have a standard menu, but you can make your own. It has outside seating also available on the sidewalk, and then it is also open very late for great late night options. Ship Eats is what they call room service, and it has a very deep menu, and depending on your level of stateroom, you will have a great menu or even an additional enhanced menu for dining in your stateroom. Let's now take a look at those staterooms, and it does have the standard offerings of an inside stateroom, an ocean view stateroom, as well as various sizes of solo staterooms. Some are very small, but they do have a variety of offerings. Their balcony staterooms are called sea terrace staterooms. You have your standard sea terrace. This is where you're going to have that red 
hammock on your balcony. And then they also have the central sea terrace, which is obviously midship. And then you have extra large sea terrace staterooms, which are more forward. They are the exact size of a stateroom, but they do have a much larger bathroom. However, the bathroom, because it has a separate shower and a separate water closet, there is no door to the vanity area. Virgin also has a very unique bed configuration. So you can have your beds set up in the standard style of both together for a normal double king bed, or you can actually have them separated during the day or at night made up to sleep where they are separated as a sofa configuration. The closets in these rooms are a little bit different as well. There are no closet doors. There is a curtain and there is ample hanging space. And Virgin is trying to work on their storage issues with adding some drawers now in the closets. These are very high tech staterooms. So there's actually a tablet that controls your room temperature, your blinds, as well as your television, and you can also request service from the tablet. There are tons of outlets on board, both U.S. and European, and you also have several USBs all through the cabin and also beside each side of the bed. The hammock, the red hammock on the balcony is a guest favorite, very popular, very comfortable, great place to relax on your balcony, and these are also sold on board for you to take home with you. It seems that Virgin has taken a page out of the celebrity as well as the Norwegian playbook with a variety of different suite offerings. Now, they call these rockstar suites, and there are mega rockstar suites, which are the massive suite at 2,100 square feet, the fab suite at 950 square feet, the posh suite 833 square feet, and then the gorgeous suite at 570 square feet. The mega rock star perks include access to Richard's rooftop, which is the suite's sun deck and bar. And then you also have priority booking as well as embarkation and debarkation. You also have a daily bar tab associated with those reservations as well as an unlimited in-room bar setup. Up. The Mega Rockstar agent is available to you at Sailor Services, and everyone in the cabin also receives premium Wi Fi. The Rockstar Quarters are also suites, which are the Brilliant Suite at 482 square feet, the Cheeky Corner Suite, which is obviously on the corner of the ship aft, at 615 to 857 square feet, depending on the deck. Then you have the Seriously Suite, which is 352 square feet, the Suite Aft Suite, 416 to 661 square feet, and this obviously is at the aft of the ship, and all of the suites have these amazing full marble bathrooms. They're absolutely gorgeous. The Rockstar Quarter perks do include VIP priority booking and embarkation. You also have a Rockstar agent at Sailor Services, and you also have a one-time bar setup in the stateroom. When you finish it, they do not replenish. And then you also get access to Richard's rooftop. Virgin Voyages also has some really different entertainment. It is actually very, very good. I wasn't sure what to expect on board, but I was pleasantly surprised. The main entertainment is going to be in the main theater, which they call the Red Room. Now, reservations are also required for all of the main entertainment venues, and you do this on the app once you get on board. There are flexible configurations of this main theater where you have a standard theater where you have a stage in front and everybody sits behind. Then you also have a split stadium seating where you have like bleachers on each side and in the middle between the two, you will have a performance. This is normally done for the show Dual Reality. 
Then you have a flat floor configuration where there is no seating whatsoever. And this is normally done for their unlimited dance party thing. That's the name of the show, actually. And I found this to be a little bit beyond my taste, but you may absolutely love it. The Manor is a two-story nightclub. Again, reservations are required. There is a variety of different shows in this, and it does have your typical nightclub dance parties late at night. But this is also where you're going to see the comedians. There is a drag show, and there's also a show-dinner theater combination that you can book once you get on board. Both the Red Room and the Manor do require the reservations, but those reservations do expire 10 minutes prior to the show. So walk-ins are absolutely available, and we were able to see these shows a number of times by just walking in 10 minutes before the show. There is a small casino on board that does have a cigar lounge inside it as well. And then on deck at night, you're going to have various theme parties. And the big one is the Scarlet Night, where make sure that you bring your red. And it is a very lively, well done, very tasteful dance party that has a lot of energy. There is a PJ party on deck as well, where obviously you bring different types of pajamas. Be as conservative or as liberal as you want with your PJs. Live music is found throughout the ship, and you will have normally some sort of small group at the dock house and also other lounges, such as ones located in the roundabout, which is the atrium on board. You will have that as well as uh, someone acting as a DJ, spinning records during the day. And then you also have outside of the Red Room, the main theater, you have the karaoke rooms, which is called the Groupie. And these are private karaoke rooms that you can assign and sign up for for one-hour sessions. The Social Club is an area where you will be able to have a lot of gaming areas as well as an arcade located there. And I mentioned the Roundabout, which is the central hub atrium of the ship where you'll find uh, guest services, the DJ, and many other venues. There are also a lot of very unique outdoor spaces on Virgin Voyages ships. Now, the Aquatic Club is the main pool, and it is located on Deck 15. It is a very long pool, but it's deceiving. The minimal area allowed for actual swimming is just located in that very center area where it's the only area for you to actually submerge yourself. The rest of it is basically wading ankle deep and it's meant more for socializing. Those mats around the pool are for rent from the Aquatic Club Bar. Then you have the Athletic Club, which is another pool area. It is a small pool called the Wellbeing Pool. Now on the Athletic Club, both the standard deck and the upper deck, you're going to have a lot of outdoor exercise equipment that many people use on day one, but normally I don't see a lot of people using this exercise equipment during the cruise. Now, the perch is an area that is a very quiet area on deck 17 aft. It is right above the athletic club, and this is an area where you can meet some of your friends, your family, and just chill at this beautiful area overlooking the aft of the ship. And now above the pools, you also have the cabanas and the grand cabanas on the starboard side of the ship. These can be reserved for the day on board at the athletic club. Now make sure that you do go there and book your cabana early because they do go fast and there are special drink packages that you can purchase for both the cabanas and the grand cabanas. And then there is the net which is on deck 16 aft. This is a very unique setting and it is an industrial net that is pulled across the deck. You're able to look down all the way to deck 7 to the dock house area 
and it is a fun adventure. However, I did not find it too comfortable because you cannot wear shoes on the net. You also have the sidewalk, which is the promenade on board. This is on deck seven outside of multiple venues like the roundabout main atrium, as well as other venues such as the pizza parlor. And this is an outside area where there's plenty of seating and it does traverse the entire perimeter of the entire ship. Other very distinctive, unique venues on board. One is the Voyage Vinyl, which is the Virgin Records record store on board. Then you also have on deck exercise classes that you can sign up for through the app. There is a barber shop right there off of the roundabout, as well as a tattoo parlor at sea. Something extremely different only available on Virgin Voyages. Then you also have a specialty coffee area where you have complimentary cookies, sweets, and pastries that are available. Specialty coffees are an extra charge. There is also a small amount of shopping on board where you have your typical cruise fare as well as sundries and Virgin Voyages memorabilia. One unique offering from Virgin is that in the Bahamas, they do have a private beach club at Bimini. This is a new club, and it is a very, very nice venue. It has two large freshwater pools with a DJ in the afternoon, a tapas lunch, and a huge beach with free lounge chairs and umbrellas and a variety of different types of cabanas to rent for the day. It's time for me now to address some of the hype and the chatter out there that may be having you think twice about booking on Virgin Voyages. Many people have said this is way too raunchy for me and it's way too wild. Well, this is an adult cruise and there are some fun sexual innuendos being thrown around here or there, but nothing raunchy and nothing in your face. So that is completely overblown. Now, the wild parties, there are some deck parties at night, and there are dance parties in the manor at night. Now, these are very professionally done, and they are very well controlled, and you do not have to participate in them, and I guarantee you will not hear them from your staterooms, and you can also find an alternative area to have a very relaxing, enjoyable evening. I have also heard from other people that there are going to be drag queens everywhere in your face and trying to hit on you. This is absolutely absurd. It's not the case. There are drag shows in the manor, but it's not going to be anything that's going to be disturbing to you. This is a very LGBT plus friendly cruise line, but it is not anything that you absolutely need to worry about. I've also heard that you can't find any quiet areas on board ever. This is absolutely not the case. I mentioned this before. There are so many restful, peaceful areas on board. Those upper decks aft are great areas just to chill. And don't forget that sea terrace red hammock that you can spend a wonderful afternoon, peaceful afternoon, watching the sea go by in that extremely comfortable hammock. So is Virgin Voyages right for you? Well, you must be an adult 18 years or older to sail on Virgin, and you have to have somewhat of a free spirit, open mind, and a little adventurous as well. I also feel that it attracts more foodies than it does Partiers, so if you like your food and cuisine, you will absolutely love Virgin Voyages. If you do like to party and that's in your mood for that night, you will have ample opportunity to find a group of people that's looking to have a great time. If you do not have a bar tab as part of your promotion, you do need to budget in for the alcoholic drinks because they are going to be an extra charge. I really did enjoy our first sailing on the Scarlet Lady, and you can watch that video here on my channel. We are going on the Valiant Lady next month in March of 2024, so make sure that you subscribe and wait for that review because I'm really looking forward to that eight night on the Valiant Lady. 
I hope that you found this video helpful and that you consider subscribing to the channel for additional cruise content just like this. When you're ready to book your cruise on Virgin Voyages or any other premium cruise line, please consider Seymour Seas Travel by emailing me at the email address here below or in my contact information in the description. I hope that you enjoy some of these videos next. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you again soon.